Tom Clancy games date back to 1996, when the man himself co-founded the video game development studio, Red Storm Entertainment. Later on, Ubisoft would purchase Red Storm and acquire the perpetual rights to use Clancy's name and work for video games and related media. At that time, all games were connected to the same universe. Over the last couple of decades, some of the original games have stayed true to this, but there have been many later additions that have certainly moved in a different direction. In this video, I would like to quickly run through the Tom Clancy games that have been released and how they fit into the overall Clancyverse timeline. I won't be talking about every game, like Politica. This is some very early work, and there isn't a huge amount of information on it. I also won't be going through every single crossover and mention across the games, just the main crossover points, because there is an absolute heap of them, a lot quite small and insignificant. But there are also quite a number that were very obviously just for promotional purposes, rather than being part of the overall story in the Tom Clancy universe. The Tom Clancy names and series I'll be talking about are Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon, Splinter Cell, End War, Hawks, the Division, Elite Squad, and X Defiant. The dates these games were produced and worked on are as shown. Rainbow Six, 1998 to present. Ghost Recon, 2001 to present. Splinter Cell, 2002 to 2013. End War, 2008 to 2014. Hawks, 2009 to 2010. The Division, 2016 to present. Elite Squad, 2020 to 2021, and X Defiant, still to be released. But this isn't particularly useful when talking about how they cross over in the overall universe, so let's show them on the same graph based on their in-game story years. Now, this needs to be taken very loosely. Any games still being worked on don't really have an end date yet, so I've just run them off the edge of the chart for now. But also there's nothing to say that some of these other games no longer being made won't be featured later on, like we've seen with Splinter Cell. As you can see, Elite Squad and X Defiant don't actually have a timeline. And to be fair, they really couldn't have one. They feature a number of characters and factions that just couldn't coexist at the same time. These two titles are very obviously separate from the main universe, while using the Tom Clancy name and characters purely for marketing purposes. In 1996 we're introduced to Rainbow, which is a newly created multinational counter-terrorism unit composed of elite soldiers from NATO countries, formed to address the growing problem of international terrorism. The Rainbow Six story ran for eight years before the next game storyline came into the picture. In 2004, Sam Fisher, a covert ops veteran, is recruited to spearhead the newly activated Splinter Cell program, which is a part of the third echelon a top-secret initiative within the National Security Agency. Four years later, we were introduced to the newly conceived squad of the United States Special Operations Forces, referred to as Ghosts. Ghost Recon begins its story in 2008, following the civil unrest in Russia that has come to be from an ultra-nationalist regime being placed into power. In 2014, we are given the role of a US Air Force pilot and squadron leader of an elite unit called Hawks, or High Altitude Warfare Experimental Squadron. From the very beginning, we are tasked with providing air support for a Ghost Recon team carrying out missions in Mexico. Over the next six years, Hawks and the Ghosts would carry out many operations together. There are also brief references towards Rainbow Six and End War dotted throughout. In 2015, a biological attack in New York takes down the city and brings the entire United States government to the brink of collapse. A group of sleeper cell agents, called the Division, are then activated as the country's last line of defense, as all other conventional means have failed. This pandemic affected not just the US, but the entire planet. However, there is no mention of this potential extinction event in any of the Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon, or Hawk stories that were playing out during the same time. It was confirmed by developers both before and during the development that the Division universe is separate from other Tom Clancy games. Peace between the global superpowers of the United States, European Federation and Russia 
is balancing on a knife's edge due to the worldwide energy crisis and the shifting of the balance of power. By 2020, World War III erupts, affecting every continent on the planet. While End War heavily features units and characters from Ghost Recon, Hawks, Rambo 6, and Splinter Cell, its story is inconsistent with the other titles. For example, Hawks and the Ghost Recon Future Soldier story continues on through 2020 and beyond, and have clearly not been affected in any way by an event such as a worldwide war. While obviously linked in some way, End War appears to be more of an alternative future to the Tom Clancy Universe timeline that the other games are running along. In 2019, during Operation Watchmen, Splinter Cell's Sam Fisher has been deployed into Bolivia in order to recover sensitive intelligence data from a rogue CIA officer. The fourth echelon get in contact with Karen Bowman and borrow the ghost team to assist in this mission. Later on, while still in Bolivia, the ghosts are investigating a massacre of cartel members when they learn of Rambo operative Caveira and that she has gone AWOL, killing Santa Blanca gang members. As part of Operation Archangel, Nomad and the Ghosts assist Team Rainbow with locating her. In 2020, an experienced and aging Sam Fisher is brought on board with Team Rainbow, adopting the codename Zero. He would later become the first member of the Rainbow Operation Staff Division as an instructor for the program. In 2025, Sam Fisher would next be seen arriving on the island of Aroa. He is on the hunt for a man known only as the Strategist. With help from the ghosts, they track him down. Shortly after, the ghosts would be visited by another familiar group. Rainbow had learned of a PMC located on Aroa, who were producing a nerve gas agent with the intention of selling it overseas to foreign militaries and terrorist groups. As part of Operation Amber Sky, the Ghosts and Rambo would hunt down those involved and put a stop to the production. As I stated earlier on, this wasn't intended to talk through the overall story of the Clancyverse, just how each of these games have been connected over the years. Because I like to write up a lot of speculation videos, I see a lot of comments around other Tom Clancy titles and how these could have been evolved. So I wanted to quickly put this together to help clear a few things up. It really must be noted that this is purely based on the state of these games as of writing this script. Recent years have proven that writers under the Clancy name have been allowed to be a little bit more relaxed with how they tackle things. Plus, I've noticed over the years certain dates in the timeline have been changed or removed altogether. So it's entirely possible that certain games and events that previously didn't make sense could suddenly be possible in the same timeline. Summing up, at this stage Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon, Splinter Cell and Hawks all run on the same timeline and are a part of the main Clancy universe. End War, although following a similar history, is more of an alternative future to what is playing out in the main story. Had it been more commercially successful back when it was released, it could be a different story today. The Division so far has been confirmed as its own universe, and the likes of Elite Squad and X Defiant don't really seem to have any supporting story that would make sense. This has been another one of those videos that I really only decided to put together at the last minute while I was researching for other topics. I'm curious about all of you watching this who have made it this far. How far back did you start playing Tom Clancy games? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found some of this interesting and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!